Hello and welcome to this technical video about the performance of Final Cut Pro on the new MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch M1 Pro and M1 Max. I'll be comparing those two Macs along with two other ones, so the 2017 iMac, the 27 inch with a good GPU, and the M1 MacBook Air from last year. Now the M1 14 inch Pro is the base model. M1 Pro, so the slightly reduced CPU and GPU, and that's not too important. The big difference is that a Max has twice the number of video encode and decode units, so it makes a big difference for video editors. Now there's some CPU and GPU benchmarks. Um, note that the base model does lack a bit in multi-core, but has the same single-core performance as any of the M1 machines, and that for graphics grunt, the M1 Max is clearly, uh, clearly above everything else, um, including the iMac from a few years ago. So these tests are about comparing common workflows in Final Cut. I use H.264 footage from a GH5, though there's a bit of HEVC, GH5 and iPhone footage in there. Now your mileage may vary, that's okay. I didn't have both the new MacBook Pros at the same time. I did test, had to return it, and then got the new machine. So there may have been slight differences. Apologies, please run your own tests. Do use Chrono X Pro if you can. It does make running a lot of these tests much easier, more consistent and convenient. Now, the simple test to start, just a minute of basic footage. You can see the two new machines in purple absolutely crush the older machines, at least, you know, four times the speed uh, and up to five times the speed of either of the older machines. Now, real world tests do go a bit harder than this, though. If you ramp that up to three minutes and make it multi cab first two minutes is two angles, then three angles, then four angles on the subsequent minutes, and they can all play back at different speeds, but they hit different bottlenecks. The numbers are a little bit all over the place, but interestingly, going to ProRes, by far the fastest on the new machines. On H.264, the M1 Max streaks ahead quite a bit, um, and even more on HEVC, where the M1 Pro didn't actually do much better than the M1. And I'm not sure if that's just a fluke accident or something, but the Max is certainly a faster option. Now, when you ramp up to 10-bit H.264, the new machines absolutely do win. This is only a minute, which is why the numbers are back to smaller, but clearly the decoding engines have no problem with 10-bit H.264. And these are ProRes exports, if you're going to a compressed format it might take, you know, twice as long. Now if you make that two minutes, um, the export times are, you know, roughly doubled. So 10-bit HEVC as well, and you'll see it really didn't make much difference. The M1 Air liked this less, but the new machines didn't mind this at all. Now, if you're going to some complex titles and transitions, so lots of effects, lots of transitions, and this is updated from a test I did last year, um, all, the f all of these machines will drop a frame at a very, very complex part, but the new machines do much better, and the Max does much better again than the M1 Pro. So complex titles, get the M1 Max if you can. And if you make those titles very, very complex, then the new machines still win, but the M1 Max totally crushes it. This is comparing some really complex titles from Motion VFX and Leno FX, and without rendering, these machines just, well, the Max at least, just plays this stuff completely smoothly. So M1 Max for complex titles, absolutely the winner. Now, this is a boring test which I added late, so there's no result for the 14-inch MacBook Pro here, but 22 minutes of a quite boring ProRes presentation for the main screen, all 1080p, but then a little inset, a shrunk down 4K H.264 presenter in the corner, and yeah, the new machine crushed it again. Um, you know, about a third of the time, or not quite a third of the time of the iMac, but you know, just over, just about two and a half minutes for a 22-minute export. That's great. Now, a much more complex 22-minute show, totally different, lots of 4K footage, um, outputting to 1080p or to 4K, and tons of titles, color correction, sound, all that stuff. Um, the iMac's pretty consistent. You know, you go to 1080p, you go to 4K, it doesn't really care. The M1, you know, preferred 4K, and the other machines, again, similar times, but the M1 Max winning every single test. So look at 302 seconds versus 220 seconds. 
Yeah, look, if you're doing a lot of exporting, the M1 Max is going to be the best option. Now, if instead of going from Final Cut directly, go to Send to Compressor for these tests, then it's all a little bit slower. So just have a look at the graph on the right there, the previous page, and then this page. That's to the same ProRes 4K output. And all the results are just a little bit slower in Compressor. So if you're doing an option that's available in Final Cut Pro, use Final Cut Pro. Um, otherwise, Final Cut Pro is usually on par with compressed settings. These are different compression options. So these are all to 4K exports. But the most interesting thing here is, firstly, that the M1 Pro didn't do as well as I thought it would on the HEVC. It's barely faster than the M1 Air. I'm not sure why. But for two-pass exporting, the video sharing 4K preset there is two-pass, the M1 Max doesn't do any better than the M1 Pro. Now, the next page has a few more interesting options regarding that. The first three pairs of graphs are repeated from the previous slide, and the other two are one-pass versions of those same presets to H.264 in 4K and 1080p. You'll see that not only are they both much faster than uh, the built-in two-pass preset, but the M1 Max is faster again than the M1 Pro. So you'll want to make one-pass presets for anything, especially if you've got an M1 Max. So if you take a ProRes file rather than doing Send to Compressor, then the new machines do spectacularly well. 122 seconds to export that same TV show when going from a ProRes file. And obviously this would be the same for almost any ProRes file as, a, as an input. So going to H.264 at 1080p, two minutes to do the conversion, just excellent. The iMac there going 10 times the length. It's crazy. And when we move to motion, actually the results were a little weird. The M1 Pro did go a little slower than the M1 Max, but the MacBook Air, the M1, actually went slightly faster than that. So that's just a weird bottleneck. And on a very specific test in motion, I've had excellent other results in motion, making full screen 4K 60 replicators and moving a camera through them. So the M1 Max is excellent, but this particular test, nope, bottlenecked. So which Mac should you buy? The M1 Max, MacBook Pro, is the fastest Mac under the Mac Pro. If you can afford it, want the fastest exports. So for video editors, it's the one I would recommend. It'll save you a chunk of time for any accelerated exports. Now, the M1 Pro is still faster than old laptops, but might not be faster than older desktops on every test. Um, depends on your source and destination codec. Um, and you may see a boost, but not a huge boost. So if you are on an iMac and you want better performance, you'll want to go the M1 Max or wait till next year's M1 Max. Maybe there's maybe there's an M1 Max double, like two of those is one of the, one of the current rumors, or maybe the Mac Mini. Uh, so how should you export? Uh, use hardware accelerated one pass exports. Don't do a two pass exports, especially if you've got a Max, you're wasting your hardware. And use Final Cut Pro, not Compressor for anything that Final Cut Pro can export. Compressor is still obviously a really good choice if you need to export multiple different files or use watch folders or batch encoding, stuff like that. And which codec should you use? Well, it depends. If you're putting it online, for online sharing, HEVC is fine. Online sharing services can take just about anything. They don't care about codecs or extensions, and it'll produce a good looking file in a smaller space. So it's quicker to upload and takes less space on disk. Now, um, if you're going to be sending your files direct to clients, you may want to use H.264 because not all client computers are going to be able to play back HEVC and the .m4v extension is going to throw some people off. So maybe consider using H.264 for those clients. But if you don't need to upload it at all, then ProRes is going to produce a bigger file, but much, much more quickly. So um, if you're going to upload it, you probably hit limits on your uploads. But if you're not going to upload it, then you know, pick a compressed codec. They'll take longer, about the same for each of the other codecs, um, but smaller files for HEVC. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro, I wrote this book. 
It's quite big. It's available electronically and in print. Uh, you can find out all the details at fcpefficientediting.com. Uh, you can buy it from Amazon or Apple or your favourite bookstore. Apple do recommend it on the Final Cut Pro resources page. Now, there is an update to 10.6 coming soon. I believe if you buy it electronically, you'll get the update. But if you want the paper one and you want the 10.6 new information about tracking, which is all there was really different, then just wait a couple of weeks and look for the update on Amazon. You also might like Fun With Stuff Annotator, a product I made that's on FX Factory, um, lets you highlight, circle, zoom in on different parts of your videos. Hope you find it useful. And look, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll see you again on the next one. I guess like and subscribe if you wish. Cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.